Hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to start your Atmos clock. I'm going to show you on this 519 that I have halfway taken apart here. I'm uh, gold plating the rest of the case so once that's finished I will have to show you an update on that. Um, but first we gotta identify a couple parts. This wheel down here at the bottom it's called the balance wheel. A lot of people call it a pendulum. On this style of clock, torsion clock like this, you don't really call it a pendulum, you call it a balance. In this tube, the balance tube, there's a wire. That's the suspension wire. Um, it's kind of like a hairspring in a watch, except straightened out. And the way that it acts or releases its power through is through this twist, a torsion. And then it twists and untwists. And you, you don't want to over twist it because <laughs> once you put a kink in that wire it, it can't properly twist and untwist. This is going to be a crucial one for today's video, the stop collar. It's a part that looks like the washer. Um, it's a collar around the balance tube and you want to see where that's hanging because that's how I'm going to show you how to level your clock. You see how it's hanging directly over this hole? Now if it was unlevel you'd see a gap like that there it's level and that's where you can look as the true level of your Atmos clock you don't have to use the spirit level in the front sometimes they're old sometimes they're you know moved around and they're not accurate see how that bubble says it's there but I've got it hanging directly over that hole in the lower bridge that's this part this uh, shelf here it's a lower bridge there's a hole there and you want to think of that just like you hang a plumb bob to make sure you're putting your door on straight or you tie a washer on a string and then you're hanging it over a bullseye. You hang it right in the middle and that's the level that matters. That's the true level. Um, so for the next parts come around here that silver metallic roller that's called the impulse roller and this one needs to be cleaned off and I'll give you a little tip I use a little one dip for that just on a q-tip and I can get that smudge and that stick them off of there then you don't want any interference between the action with the roller and the pallet fork now this is the pallet fork that's the aluminum metallic colored part that's protruding from the movement and going up and you know participating in the action with the roller and when you start your clock after you've gotten it level you're going to move your hand, or before you start, you're going to move your hands clockwise only. Never go back. If you go back, you can bend either a tooth on your escape wheel or you can bend a jewel on your pallet fork. And you set your hands only clockwise, never going backwards. You got your time set. Then you're going to look up here and you're going to see where that roller is in position with the pallet fork. See how it enters into that pallet fork? and then the fork releases a tooth on the escape wheel and a little bit of power is released and then it pushes and slaps that roller and sends it through the other way and it comes back around and see how I'm doing this with my fingers very gently and it comes back around that's where you'll stop about 270 degrees and then you'll let it go and now that twist in the wire is going to untwist and we're running and then it's going to enter that fork. Fork's going to hit it, pass it through, and send it around on its way the opposite direction. And now, you're not necessarily running. Now I said it's running, but it's under my power. And I know that this clock has power because I saw that pallet fork release some when it hit the roller. But for the first, you know, 15-20 minutes you start a clock like this, it's under your energy. The energy that you put into turning this balance. You put that twist in there, it untwists under your power. Now we're going to let it run and it'll be under the clock's power. So you may gradually lose a little motion in this balance wheel and that's normal and that's what it ha how it works and how it happens. When you first start it, it might be rotating fast and it becomes under the clock's power and rotates slower. Sorry for the shakiness, so I'll try to remove that. Um, so you don't know if the clock is going to run or keep time for quite a few hours and 
Um, it's best to allow it to run for a week at least to categorize it as a running clock. Um, you can even go further than that. You can go two weeks. Um, if the clock stops, you know, sometimes your house shifts between winter and summer and your clock may become unlevel. Remember looking down here or something happens and it stops. Um, start it again. Try to repeat the steps. And if you can't get it to run, give me a call or email me and I'll put the information below and we'll get it running for you. We clean oil bellow test, um, do a lot of adjustments. A lot of times I have to straighten the pallet fork because it gets bent up. Um, this is a very delicate spot of the clock. This pallet fork has to be in a proper position to receive and, and properly engage that impulse roller, the silver cylinder shaped part. So if that bent gets bent or if the wire gets twisted, you do have some bigger trouble. So be very careful with those. Um, otherwise, most of them just need a little TLC. They just need a little oil on the mainspring. The mainspring is inside this barrel here, and that's internally oiled. You don't ever oil anything externally. You never just take out the oil and start uh, putting it on the gears like you would try on a grandfather clock or cuckoo clock or something. You don't do it that way here. Um, I think that's pretty much it. You know, you'll have the dial and the hands in the way, so you kind of have to go underneath the 12 and look and see where the pallet fork is or else look from the side, you know, and you'll look from the side to, to check out your um, level here too and everything. So um, I think that's it for today. I don't really have anything else to add to this. Um, you know, you level it with your leveling screws here in the front. Um, right is to heighten the front base and left will lower it and you only have the front two. The back is a stationary pin or post. So you want to have it on a fairly level and sturdy surface. In my setup instructions, I say put it on the mantle board or headboard or things like that. And that's what I got out of the JLC uh, instructions when I um, had a 540 with them in it. So that's it. Please like, share, subscribe, look at the videos. Um, yeah, thank you. And thank you for watching. And please Please click on the website below to find our contact information if you need any further help. Um, give me a call or email. Take care and have a nice day. Ciao.